The way I approach this, I would approach this from the end. What problem we are solving and what is this, the solution? The second is who is going to use it and how in order to solve the problem. So we are talking about healthcare. I would have first conversation with the doctor if this makes them excited or not. The next step would be to create very early prototype as fast as we can in order to explain how this is going to work. Hello, I'm Dorian Averbuch. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I have three successful companies behind, two exits. And right now I'm working on a new exciting company that is poised to change the pathway of back pain patients in US and worldwide. I'm coming from Kishinev. Kishinev was a capital of Moldova. At that time, it was part of Soviet Union. As a child, I wanted to be a doctor. And I was interested about what doctors do and read books about doctors, including the f famous book of uh, Archibald Joseph Cronin about penicillin. And I was really motivated by, th by these examples. But doctor's career was not achievable for me because in Soviet Union in general, specifically difficult requirements for Jewish to attend a medical school. So my parents wanted me to be successful and they convinced me to pursue engineering career. When I was 20, I came to Israel. I went to engineering school. It was very interesting pathway for me. Every day I discovered new things, new subjects. So I had a significant passion to software and algorithm development, which made my career in computer science and computer engineering very accomplished. So when I worked for defense company called Elbit Systems in Israel, I was approached by a head of business development and proposed to develop some solution in healthcare using the flagship technology that was used for cockpit helmet. When I created a prototype, I wanted to get feedback from a doctor and started to talk with him. This meeting, I think, was the pivotal meeting because when I was talking to him, I felt such ecstatic excitement, such high passion to the conversation, to the fact that I'm talking with doctors and he's listening to me, that I wanted to repeat this experience again and again and I wanted to implement his feedback into the product and this gave me motivation to do it faster so I can meet him again and present again the new prototype. So this is how this all started. Later, I worked for a company called Transcan Medical that was dealing with breast cancer diagnostics, and I learned much about cancer. During my learning process, I found that actually the survival of breast cancer patients is over 90%, but there is other cancer called lung cancer where survival rate is just 10%. So if you want to know if the lesion has cancer or not, you have to get a sample of the tissue from the lesion. Lung lesions, they are enclosed within chest and surrounded by ribs, important organs, and a lot of blood vessels. It's risky to the patient, and you need to weigh risk and benefits. And I started to think, and I connected the electromagnetic technology with the lung, and I developed myself models that allowed to perform virtual navigation in lung. I developed this model for myself and I started to look for the company that has electromagnetic sensing technology and I found uh, Superdimension. So what Superdimension developed, it developed legitimate approach when through relatively simple procedure like bronchoscopy, meaning that you take flexible tube with camera and you move this tube towards the lesion and then using the tube called waking channel you can protrude tools and get biopsy from the lesion. But since these lesions are very far from the area where you can see, doctors were not able to approach those areas. So this gap was said to be closed using electromagnetic navigation. There is a sensor on the tip of the flexible tool and using the map coming from preoperative imaging like CT in the way similar to how we navigate the cars, doctors were able to approach these lesions. About, I think, 2006, we received FDA clearance and started the journey, the commercial journey of this new product uh, in the United States. And this was an amazing experience. So this solution 
became a standard of care in the next 10 years from 2001. A number of patients treated with the supervention reached 70,000 70, and the sales were about, uh, I think, 70 million. And in 2012, the company was acquired for 350 million by Covidian, and now it remains part of Metronic. In the medical world, we have uh, three main customers. Number one, a doctor who is going to use your product. Number two is medical institution that is going to buy the product. And number three is regulatory requirements that are going to permit this product for use. Technology was very complex from engineering point of view, but we had to match the experience of doctors. For us, this was a whole world, but doctors, they were interested to accomplish diagnostics as fast as possible. And it was definitely a usability gap of how we plan the product to work to how they want it to work. Today, FDA, also European communities, they have very sophisticated regulations. So somebody who is starting to work on medical product, they need to be aware of timeline. It's not going to be fast. How much time you have to wait depends very much on what problem you are solving. Very important, what is your regulatory strategy for approving this product? I think that the, the important thing is awareness that technology is not enough. It's a big, important part of the product, but once you develop technology, you need to make sure that it satisfies the other needs. But one thing remained unsolved. With Superdimension, we were able to approach only large lesions. The survival from lung cancer is directly connected to the size of the lesion. If the lesion is small, say 5 to 15 millimeter size, the survival rate is close to 90%. But when the lesion is larger, then the survival rate is around 26% today, but at that time it was like 15%. This was the reason why I started by Division Medical and developed a new technologies that made this available. The way I approach this, I would approach this from the end. What problem we are solving and what is this the solution? I would imagine how this would work at the end and what kind of problem it will solve. The second is who is going to use it and how in order to solve the problem. So we are talking about healthcare. I would have first conversation with the doctor about the opportunity and hear from doctor if this makes them excited or not. The next step would be to create very early prototype as fast as we can in order to explain how this is going to work. Doctor's imagination will work very differently from engineers because they have a practical experience. So when I'm showing them the prototype of the product or mock-up of the product, they would approach this completely differently. They would ask right questions. And as a result of these questions, I would be able to understand whether my solution is vi viable or not. And if it is, what is the minimum feature set that will make them excited and actually wishing to use this product? With Body Vision, we developed completely new technology, not based on electromagnetic sensors, but using real-time modality such as C-arm, X-ray machine used in bronchoscopy. And with C-arm, we were able to reveal invisible lung cancer lesions in real time and help doctors to diagnose them. Body Vision achieved high diagnostic yield, over 90%, comparable to CT-guided approach, which opened up the diagnostics and treatment for lung cancer, not just in US, but worldwide, because this technology is easily accessible by any doctors in the world. And now this technology became actually a standard of care. Now I'm looking at a different market. I see that low back pain is a significant problem. There are, there are 70 million people in the US alone that suffer from back pain. 26 million suffer from acute back pain, but only 1 million is getting a permanent solution for their pain, creating a $50 billion market in the US. I see this as a next challenge for myself of how to approach this large problem and solve it in a simple and elegant way. 
a lot of large companies are looking into solution and they are trying to solve the problem, but they are locked in the hospital where they have to use very expensive equipment. My goal is to allow moving these procedures from hospitals to ambulatory centers where they can be performed more efficiently, safer for the patients, and also it becomes win-win for payers, doctors, and patients themselves. We are losing 80 million workdays collectively for the back pain. If we can get this time back, this would be a very impactful solution for people. And I think that everyone who can join us in this journey is welcome to talk to me and see how you can contribute to this important mission.